following and begin to follow God. And Paul says that these two things I did. Verse 21. Testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks. What message did I preach? Repentance toward God. Telling people to turn away from their wicked ways. Telling people to turn away from doing wrong things and come to Jesus Christ. He says this is the message that I preached that people should come to God. The other thing that he preached according to Acts 20 and 21 is that uh, I preached to them to have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. To have faith in Jesus Christ. I've told you before, I've shared this before, but we need to go back again and again as we trust our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the month that all of us, we must begin to realize and think twice, am I following Jesus Christ genuinely? Or is, my, is it uh, that half-heartedly that I've been following Jesus Christ? It's the time that we need to rededicate our lives back to Jesus Christ. Paul says, when I came to you, I preached nothing. I came uh, trembling, in fear and trembling. I did not come with eloquence. I did not come with good grammar. I did not come boasting of anything as an apostle. I came to you trembling. I preached to you repentance. I preached to you that you must put your faith in God. And remember the people that he is dealing with when he called these elders uh, of Ephesus. Maybe let me just read more scriptures so then uh, we share together. So he tells them the message that he preached. Repentance toward God. Turning away from our wicked words. And putting our trust and faith in Jesus Christ. That's the message that he preached. Verse 22, Acts 20, 22. The Bible says, And see now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. I do not know the things that are going to happen to me, but the Spirit has been testifying to me that where I'm going, I'm going to be imprisoned. And you are not going to see me anymore. It's a very moving uh, uh, message from Paul, a very uh, uh, a touching message from Paul. He says, I lived among you three years. I preached to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I am going. The Spirit has testified to me. The Spirit of God has told me that you shall see me no more. But I want you to keep on trusting Jesus. Keep on trusting the Lord. Stay saved. Don't go on sinning and doing wrong things. You must repent and let, make sure that your confidence and your trust is in Jesus Christ. It's the same message that Jesus is saying to us today. Repentance. Turning away from wicked ways. There are times that we think maybe God is not seeing us. We can do whatever we want. God is watching and there will be a day of recompense. There will be a day of payment. Everybody that works there is a day that you receive the reward that you receive your salary. The Bible tells us the wages, the payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God has provided a way. So Paul tells the believers, say, I'm going to Jerusalem. I am bound in spirit as I go to Jerusalem. I don't know things that are going to happen to me. Verse 23, except that the Holy Spirit has been testifying to me. Every time I went into an, a, a different city, and even when I moved from one city to another, Paul testifies to say the Holy Spirit has been telling me, saying that chains and difficulties and tribulations are awaiting you. In this life, the Bible tells us, there are tribulations, there are trials, there are pain, there is pain. There is so much that is happening. But don't lose heart. Keep your faith in God. Paul says, I am going to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit has told me, I am going to be in chains. I'm going to be imprisoned. I don't know what else is going to happen. But one thing I know the Holy Spirit has told me, there will be much trouble for you and you'll be in prison. Chains are waiting for you. Verse 24. But none of these things move me. Hallelujah. Nor do I count my life worthy to myself. So that I may finish the race with joy. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus Christ. To do what? To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. 
Hallelujah. What a mighty God we save. He says, I'm not scared of what is happening to me. I am not scared what people are going to do to me. One thing I know, I have a rest. One thing I know, God has called me into ministry. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. This is the month of the Lord. This is the month that we need to rededicate our lives to Jesus Christ. If you've never loved Jesus than ever before, this is the time that we need to love Jesus and put our house in order. Put our lives in the hands of Jesus and trust him. We can't trust the systems anymore. We can't trust the hospitals anymore when we are sick. Just look at what has happened. People have died without, be, without receiving help from the hospital. Just six, seven months before, you could pick up your phone from your bedroom, from your living room, call the ambulance, 999, they will be on your door, take you to hospital, treat you, and send you home. Things have changed in the world. You call the, the doctor, they'll tell you, tell us how you are feeling. You are not a doctor, you don't even know the symptoms. You have to say it on the phone to somebody. And if that somebody is not kind enough, they tell you, stay where you are, don't move out. We can't trust the system anymore. Politicians, we have seen politicians set their nations on fire. We can't trust politicians, but we trust Jesus Christ. Who can help these politicians? Who can help us live at a time as this? What am I saying? Faith in Jesus Christ. Trust in Jesus Christ. Putting our confidence in Jesus Christ. There are people that have got money who put their trust in wealth. What has money done to them? They are still empty because only Jesus can fill that gap. Only Jesus can fill that emptiness in our lives. So Paul tells them, I never hid anything. I am not even scared of my life. It is the same Paul that testifies to say, for me to live is Christ. If I die, I gain. Hallelujah. What a, a mighty way to live. To put Jesus Christ first in our lives. This Jesus is able to, to, to help us, is able to make sure that whatever we may be going through is able to see us through. No matter how difficult the situation may be, God is faithful. God is a mighty God, is able to make sure that what we are going through, he helps us. Paul is going through a tough time, but God is saying, go. To Jerusalem. They will arrest you. They will punish you. They will put you in prison. But don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. And he says. I began to move. And to go toward Jerusalem. I may not never see you again. He tells the brethren. In uh, Ephesus. He says, you may not see me again, but I want to encourage you, hold on to Jesus. He says, hold on to Jesus. You may never see me again, but hold on to Jesus, Paul tells the Ephesian elders. And here what the Bible says, let's read on Acts chapter number 20, verse 28, maybe 25. Indeed, now I know that you owe, you know that you owe, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God. You will see me, my face, no more. He tells them, this is the last time you are seeing me. He's telling the Ephesian elders from Ephesus as he met them at Melitus. He says, you see me no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day. That I am innocent of your blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. When you read these words, uh, oh, they are sobering. Paul tells them, I share the word of God to you. If you're going to mess it up, it's up to you. I am innocent of your blood. I'll go before God to say, I told the Ephesian people that this is the way. To go to follow Jesus Christ. To hold on 
unto Jesus. Paul is telling us the same thing today. We have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. What shall we do? We must go and tell others. Paul says, I am innocent of your blood. I am not going to be accountable that I didn't do my part. I have done my part. I have shared the gospel. Can we please pattern with Jesus Christ? Let's partner with Jesus Christ and share the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no better time that we need to share the gospel than the time we are living in. Send a text message to somebody and tell them Jesus loves you. Share with your relatives. Pray with them. There are people they can find credit on their phone just to, uh, just to, uh, to spread uh, uh, gossip. But I want to encourage you and me that let's spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If our relatives perish, their blood will be on us. Paul is testifying here to say your blood is not going to be upon me. Why? I have shared the gospel with you. If you don't follow Jesus Christ, it's up to you. Joshua says the same thing to the children of Israel. Joshua 24, 15. He says, choose today whom you are going to believe, whom you are going to have confidence in. Choose today whom you are going to have your faith in. The God of the people that you live among, the gods that you have seen across, or the living God. And Joshua says, but as for me and my house, we choose to serve the Lord. I want to encourage somebody today. Choose the Lord. There is a blessing in choosing Jesus Christ. There is a blessing in choosing Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I am not guilty of your blood. If I fall dead today, at least I have told you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where are we putting our confidence? Where is our trust? Is our trust in the money? Or is our trust in the things of this world? But the Bible says, our trust and confidence must be in our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we continue to share from this, you see Paul telling them, the brethren, I testify to you today, I am innocent of the blood of all men. I have done my part. I am running a race. I am fulfilling a ministry. Can I testify to somebody and share with you today that where you are, there is a ministry that God has put upon your life. There are people that God has brought your way. There are friends that God has brought your way. And they will never hear the gospel from somebody else except from you. We are born in the families we are born for the purpose of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether they believe you or they don't believe you, do your part. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't need to be a pastor to share the gospel. You don't need a title to share the gospel. All you need is just to be a believer who has faith in Jesus Christ. Who is trusting Jesus Christ. Say Jesus is well able to save you. Yes, I have no money to give you. But what I have, I give to you. Remember Peter and John as they were going into the temple. At the gate called Beautiful. There sat a man who was lame from uh, the mother's womb. The man was looking to Peter and John to say, give me something. He was expecting money. Like he, our day to day, uh, you see beggars standing by the traffic lights, standing by the shops, anywhere they are asking for money. Peter, in those days, they had people that were begging. And this man went to the temple because he knew that the people who come to the temple, the Christians, uh, at least they've got softened hearts, they'll give me something. But this day, as Peter and John were going into the temple, according to Acts chapter number 3, you read from chapter number 2 into 3, 4, uh, Peter and John said, uh, money and silver we don't have. Can you imagine they didn't even have the offering to go and put in the offering basket? But these are apostles. They had no money, but they had Jesus Christ. You may have nothing, but as long as you have Jesus Christ, hold on, and it shall be well. Hallelujah. They said, what we have is what we give. You and me. We have a congregation. It might be your household, your family. 
preach the gospel to them. Tell them about Jesus Christ. The people that we meet, the friends at our places of work, our marketplaces, wherever you go, your Facebook page, your WhatsApp group, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whisper a prayer, share a prayer with friends so that we will not be guilty of the blood of our relatives and friends. All of us, we are called to preach the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul tells them, I am not guilty of the blood. Verse 27, Acts 20 and verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Paul says, what I have shared with you is the full counsel of God. I've told you about God. I've told you about Jesus Christ. I've told you about the Holy Spirit. I have shared with you the word, the word, the word, the word of God. And he knew that when they have the word of God, they will be safe. What are you teaching your children? What are you sharing with your relatives? What are we doing with people that God has brought our way? Share the word of God. Paul is going through tribulations and trials. If you read the whole of the chapter that we are going through, time and again, Paul was being attacked. Even this time he couldn't go back into Ephesus. He's at Meritus and he calls the Ephesian elders, the leaders, to say, please come. I want to share with you the last words because you shall see me no more. Verse 28, Acts 20, 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves, to all the flock, the people, the congregations, the friends that God has given to you, among which the Holy Spirit has given you as overseers to shepherd the church of God. So he looks at the congregation. It's not the pastor's congregation. Nowadays, uh, as men and women of God, we have uh, changed the vocabulary. My church, my congregation, my ministry. If there are words that I am afraid of mentioning, is to say my church, my congregation, my members. You rarely hear me use those words. I am scared of using them. Others are okay to use those words, but for me, I'm talking about myself. I don't want to use those words. My church, my congregation, no. Because it is the congregation of God. Yes, we know what people mean when they say my church. They are referring to the church they belong to. But these churches and names are not what Paul is talking about. Paul planted these churches. You rarely hear Apostle Paul calling them to say my churches, my church. Is telling the elders of Ephesus, be careful how you look after God's people whom the Holy Spirit has entrusted to you. Just like parents, the children that we have, we must teach them the word of God and the right things because we are just custodians. And we will give an account before God who gave us these children. The people that God brings our way, we will give an account if we don't tell them the truth, the word of God. The wives that we have, the husbands that we have, if we don't do the right thing according to the word of God, we will give an account before God. But that is not our portion. So Paul warns them. He says, look after God's people that the Holy Spirit has given you. Shepherd them, feed them. What is the work of a shepherd? To feed the flock. To take care of the flock. Whose flock? The, uh, verse 28. Look after the sheep that the Holy Spirit has given you. The churches that God has given you. The people that God has given you. To shepherd them. To feed them. The church of God. So the church is the church of God. Believers. We are believers because we believe in Jesus Christ. We must have faith in Jesus Christ. And hear what he says. He's telling the elders, look after God's people. Shepherd the church of God, which he, he, God himself, purchased and bought with his own blood. My God, my God. As a church, we have been bought with the price. The blood of Jesus Christ. That 
price is so precious.